When the land you watch grows warped and wicked, when death and decay are the fruits of your harvest, what becomes of you? What happens when the guardian becomes as twisted as their grove? Welcome to the Wintry Wyvern, let's talk about the Druid Circle of the Blighted. In a similar pocket to the old Spores Druid, within the book Tal'Dorei Reborn by Darrington Press lies the Druid Circle of the Blighted. You play as a warden of a wilds transformed. As the land you protect has grown or has always been corrupt with errant, vile magic. Whether with the goal of restoring the vitality of your domain, or entirely forsaking the druid ideologies of old, you come to embrace this defiled magic to wield as your own, becoming the speaker of withered trees and rotten bloom, tapping into an entirely separate well of terrible, unnatural, arcane might. Your corrupting curse is so pervasive it defiles the soils and seas around you, at second level, you gain Defile Ground. With a bonus action, you choose a 10-foot radius patch of land or water to malign with your blight. For one minute, the area is difficult to move through for hostile enemies, having their speed as they stand upon it. Every turn, once per turn, if they take damage from a spell or attack, they are dealt an additional 1d4 necrotic damage. This damage increases to 1d6 per turn at level 10, as well as doubling to a 20-foot radius and to 1d8 damage at level 14. You can move the patch of land every turn as a bonus action, but of course it will never affect flying creatures. You can only do this once per rest, but it's really, really good. Difficult terrain that only affects your enemies makes it harder for them to escape your allies and the land itself that traps them. Assuming you have three allies focusing the same enemy, that's a bonus 4d4 damage every round, at no cost to concentration. Combine this with something like Moonbeam to deal extra damage on their turn as well. At 10th level, the 20 foot radius area is as large as a fireball's AoE, and very difficult to leave for the majority of landlocked threats. This is easily the cornerstone of the entire subclass. Focus on picking up multi-turn damage spells or planning with your party to deal consistent damage turn by turn that whittles down those health bars. Of course, a Blighted Druid is still a Druid. Also at 2nd level is Blighted Shape which wickedly warps your wild shape in appearance and talent. You gain proficiency in intimidation as your body takes on physical signs of the blackened affliction. Your wild shape is equally distorted and empowered, gaining an additional plus two to armor class and 60 more feet of dark vision. You find yourself embodying the terrors of the night, the wandering beasts that fuel the tales told at every campfire. But unlike many cryptids of legend, you rarely wander alone. At level 6, you steal the vitality of those upon your darkened land and bring forth life equally accursed. When a non-undead, non-construct creature is injured while standing on your defiled ground, you can spend a reaction to birth a blighted sapling beside them that immediately attacks, then subsequently moves and strikes on your turn at your command. It lives and breathes until it drops to zero, until you take a long rest, or until you summon a new one. You can summon them a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus per rest. Let's pull up the stat block and talk. It's got double your level in hit points, a solid running speed, 60 feet blind sight, and a war pick's worth of damage. Now, it's missing that one line that all recent summons have, making me wonder if it can do other actions not in its stat block, like dodge and dash and grapple. Either way, a creature that takes no action economy at all to move and fight on its own is not only a fantastic boost to damage, it's really cool. It reminds me of a Maokai from League of Legends or any game of Plants vs. Zombies. And there's no limit to what it looks like visually, besides being a medium plant. You could flavor it as a giant seedling, a thorny rose bloom, or a viney imitation of a creature or yourself. As the saying goes, flavor is free. But let's add a bit of boom to the bloom. Foul Conjuration toughens up your summons and adds some damage to their demise. Blighted Resilience makes them immune to necrotic damage, poison damage, and the poisoned condition. Toxic Demise makes them explode when they hit zero hit points, damaging all creatures within 5 feet that fail a con save. This is a chart that tells you how much damage these booms deal per CR, because this feature works not only on your saplings, but any beast, plant, or fey creature you summon. As far as I know, here's the complete list of summons that gain these benefits. I love the visual of conjuring a ton of animals and rolling them into explodes like banelings of the Starcraft notoriety. The saplings gain some great durabilities. With immunity to poison and 60 feet blindsight, the saplings can run around in a darkness or a cloud kill with no issues at all, chasing down enemies blinded by the fumes of the latter. The capstone feature at 14th level is Incarnation of Corruption. 
Forever altered by the tainted land, your body changes as well, gaining ashen skin, monochrome eyes, and jagged spines, traits that used to only manifest on your wild shapes. As such, you gain a plus two bonus to your armor class even while out of wild shape, resistance to necrotic damage, and a bolstering of temp HP if you spend a bonus action while standing on your defiled ground. Rather than a game-changing gambit or a signature move, your druid embraces the permanence of their affliction, reaping their benefits in full. A reminder that by 14th level, all your saplings have 28 hit points, and your defiled ground deals 1d8 bonus damage per trigger, with an area again as wide as a fireball. The armor, resistance, and temp HP are a testament to your resilience, as the commander of your conjured creatures and the crux of your cursed land, draining the vitality of those around you to feed the flora and yourself. So only one question remains. What story lies behind the painted eyes of the Blighted Druid? What curse roots itself in your veins, sowing the seeds of an unnatural existence? Does your druid fight the affliction, appealing to the gods of harvest and flourish, or do they embrace the decay that poisons the ground they walk upon? Are you a harvester, a harbinger, or both? Only one way to find out. Until next time, may your wild shapes always be wickedly warped, your saplings be ever so sinister, and above all, stay frosty.